Let's now proceed to a uh, chapter of assisting your clients with special skin care. The very goal of this chapter is to prepare you to assist clients with skin care and help prevent the development of pressure ulcers and other skin conditions. Now, let's go back again with a uh, definition of skin. We know that it is the outer covering of the body. The skin is also the body's largest organ. And let's go to a functions of the skin. It protects the body from infection and injury. It eliminates body waste through perspiration. It regulates body temperature. It senses heat, cold, pain, and pressure. So now how can you assist a client with routine skin care? This is a routine skin care. First, you can assist um, by bathing or showering, providing perin perineal care, back rub, fingernail care, toileting, hair care, changing positions, and applying cream or lotion. So why is bathing important? Bathing removes dirt, bacteria, odor, and substances that cause allergies. During bathing, the client and caregivers can observe rashes, infected areas, bruises, cuts, etc. So let's now review our routine skin care. Why are nutrition and hydration important to skin? They are beneficial to every part of the body. The color, texture, and the ability of the skin to heal depend on good, nourishing food and adequate fluids. So why is it important to be particularly gentle when touching the skin of obese, frail, elderly, or underweight clients. Obese clients have skin that is less elastic and may have poor circulation. They may have folds of skin, making cleaning difficult and possibly may cause irritation. Rapid weight or fluid gain can cause skin to stretch to the point of breaking open. Elderly or frail clients have thin skin that tends to be dry and to tear very easily. Underweight clients have poor nutrition and thin skin, and all these characteristics make the skin susceptible to injury. Why is it important to observe, record, and report? If danger signs are noted early, it can help prevent breakdown of skin. Bony prominences. These places where bone comes close to the skin, for example, elbow, tailbone, heel, ankle, shoulder blades. These are places where pressure ulcer may form. Drainage. It is any fluid or blood that leaks from a wound. Edema. Edema is a swelling or a condition in which the body tissue contains too much fluid. Integrity is a description of whether or not the, skin's, the client's skin is intact or unbroken. Phlebitis. It is an inflammation of a vein common to the veins in the legs. Pressure ulcer. It is an area of skin where pressure has destroyed the surface tissue sometimes called a pressure sore, the cubitus, or bed sore. Stable skin surface. This is the skin that may have superficial wound just on the surface, but it is not open, infected, or draining. It is also called good skin integrity. Now, we have some terms for special skin care. 
We have here stasis dermatitis. It is a skin condition with a rash or a scaly red area or itching. It's usually caused by problems in circulation. Next is the status ulcer. It is an open wound usually found in the lower leg due to poor blood circulation. It does not affect the surrounding area. Topical medications. Medications that are absorbed through the skin. Turgor. It is the normal fullness and elasticity of the skin. We test skin turgor by gently pinching a piece of skin on the back of the hand and then letting go. If the skin stays in the pinched position, the person has poor skin turgor. This is a sign of dehydration. If the person has very tight and shiny skin, this can be a sign of edema. Unstable skin surface. Area of the skin that does have a wound and it is open, infecting, infected or draining. It is also called poor skin integrity. Varicose veins. Swollen, disintended and knotted veins. Visible especially in the leg. They occur most often in people who stand or sit motionless for long periods of time. I will be showing you different pictures here that I cannot upload. I have here stasis ulcer, the dermatitis, varicose veins with stasis, the edema, the pressure ulcer. So now let's go to um, stasis dermatitis. This condition can occur and con can continue for many years without affecting the surrounding skin or can become more severe and cause an open wood co cold status ulcer. The lower, the lower leg is very usually affected. The causes of stasis dermatitis include poor circulation, tight stockings, shoes, casts, braces, or splints, injuries, edema, varicose veins, phlebitis, poorly controlled diabetes. Now, you can help prevent stasis dermatitis by encouraging your client to avoid wearing tight stockings and shoes. Elevate the client's leg or legs when he or she is sitting down not crossing the client's legs. Limit salty food and get exercise to encourage circulation. You can also help with gentle handling and proper cleaning of the skin. Now let's go to pressure ulcers. There are actually four stages of pressure ulcer. Stage one can be just an inflamed skin. Stage two, stage two it shows blisters, tears in skin, or a shallow open area. And the third one is full skin loss, exposing damaged tissue beneath and tissue loss. And the stage four is full skin loss and tissue loss. Pressure also usually develop over bony areas, bony prominences, and pressure areas. That includes elbows, heels and ankles, knees, hips, tailbone, backbone, shoulder blades, toes, wrists, and the ears. Now, let's go to causes of pressure ulcer. Pressure on skin being in one position too long. Rubbing against skin. Lack of fatty tissue. Dirty or wet skin. Person too overweight or too thin. Existence of infection, poor nutrition and hydration, and lack of activity or movement. You can help prevent pressure ulcers. First is by positioning. Change the client's position at least every two hours. Encourage the client to move around. Next is use lotion on dry skin, but do not apply.
apply lotion to skin that has tears or is open. Report if client complains if a tingling or burning feeling in the skin. When the client is in bed, use a special pressure relieving mattresses. Place cushions between bony prominences such as ankles and knees when client is in his or her side. Small pillows and sheepskin are two common options. Keep linens from wrinkling. Keep the client clean and dry. Now, let's go to observing, reporting, and recording. Observing and reporting changes in the skins in the skin is your most important role in special skin care. Noticing and reporting changes before they get really bad can make a big difference in the health and comfort of the client. Be sure to report changes in the color of the skin, drainage, the type of fluid, amount of fluid, color and odor of fluid swelling or edema, rash, dryness, scratching, pain reported by client, skin feeling warm or cold to the touch, or integrity. Are, they, are there any new openings in the skin, including tears, blisters, or cuts? Your approach makes a difference. Your approach toward a client or toward the task is just as important as your skills at performing the task. Show a positive approach. Be encouraging, accepting, and supportive. Provide as much privacy as possible. Make the client feel comfortable. Speak to the client while you are offering care. What you can do. You have to assemble equipment and supplies. Change client's position again at least every two hours or as prescribed in their care plan. Keep skin clean and dry. Apply non-medicated lotions. Observe, record, and report. Clean reusable equipment. Store reusable supplies. Encourage nutrition and hydration. And use a person-centered care approach. Do not apply topical medications to an unstable skin surface. Now, I want to read this uh, skill checklist of positioning a client on his or her back. Talk with client about need to reposition from lying on her or her side. Explain what the steps will be. Talk with client throughout the procedure. Wash your hands. Gather equipment, large and small pillows or sheep skin. Move client either to center of bed or a safe distance from the side. Turn client onto back with head and body in line with each other. Place pillow under client's head and neck. Place pillow under lower legs from knees to ankles with heels hanging free. Position client's arms slightly bent or side or folded on top of abdomen. Cover client and make sure bedding is loosened over the feet. Make client comfortable and safe. Wash your hands. Record and report unusual observations or problems.